We've got breaking news from the World Cup in Qatar. Argentina headed to the final after a 3-0 win against Croatia. Lionel Messi scored first on a penalty kick, giving him his 11th World Cup goal. That's the most of any Argentine player in World Cup history and the most World Cup goals of any active player on the planet. Julian Alvarez scored the other two for Argentina, who are headed to the final for the first time since 2014. They'll now play the winner of France and Morocco in the final at 9 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday morning. That other semifinal uh, coming up tomorrow. So with Lionel Messi's goal, that gives him five on the tournament, ties him for the golden boot lead uh, with Kylian Mbappe, who, odds are, could appear in the final. And those two not only battling for a world title, but also possibly battling for the to win the golden boot race as well. For Argentina, their first final since 2014 in Brazil when they lost to Germany and added extra time. That was Messi's first final. Argentina looking to win their first World Cup since 1986. And let's welcome in Jonathan Johnson, who's been covering the tournament for us, a part of our coverage here at CBS Sports HQ. Uh, JJ, I'll start just by getting your reaction. Messi one step closer to that ever-elusive World Cup title. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, when he turns it on in the way that he did, uh, you know, here against uh, Croatia, it's it's really difficult to stop him. Obviously, fantastic penalty, uh, you know, to open the scoring. But really, it's all about that moment of magic, that assist uh, for Argentina's third goal. And, you know, when he's in this kind of form, he's impossible to stop. And he, re- he really looks like a man on a mission uh, at this moment in time. Obviously, very sad to see a great like Luka Modric presumably go out like that on the on the international stage. But, uh, you know, in the battle of the, the two number 10s, that there was clearly one winner uh, in this game. Do you get the sense that not only with Messi, but with this Argentina side, that they, they just have the bit between the teeth? They've got the edge that they need. They've got that little bit of toughness that maybe they haven't necessarily had before. And maybe not toughness is the right word. Maybe more attitude uh, that they've got that little bit of edge uh, to put them in the final. I think Argentina have always been a team that has a bit of attitude, a bit of edge. Uh, you know, a, a sort of a nasty streak. But, uh, you know, I think that they certainly do seem more determined than I've seen them in a long, long time. Uh, you know, and obviously more balanced as well as we're seeing in the, the performances on the pitch. Uh, you know, but I think uh, it's, you know, it, to be honest, Argentina are a team that have been capable uh, of this sort of World Cup run for, for quite a while. And it's really been on them that they've been so disappointing in so many previous tournaments. So to leave it this late in, in Messi's career, you know, it kind of feels like it's a, a final shot at glory. I'm not convinced that that Messi won't have stopped playing by 2026. So who knows, perhaps there is maybe one more World Cup in his future. But now that he's this close to winning this one, uh, you know, I certainly think that this is the best opportunity that Argentina have had in a long time and will probably have uh, in quite some time at, uh, you know, finally landing that title, that elusive title that, that Messi covets so much. Other than, I mean, the first misstep in their opening game, but, I mean, this, tur- this, this team just seems to have found their form at just the right time. And, I mean, dating back to the Copa America, which they won in 2021, I mean, that gave Messi his first international trophy. It just seems like this team now has a belief that they haven't necessarily had before as we, as we take a look at the journey. I mean, Croatia, yes, as you said, Luka Modric, I mean, there was, there's never been two teams appear in the final in consecutive tournaments that would be France and Croatia so there was that sort of that other romantic side of it that hey maybe Croatia upset the odds and get to the final but it just seems like this Argentina team to your point has been unbeatable do you get the sense that there's still more to come from this team I certainly think that they're capable of going all the way uh, and ultimately lifting the trophy Uh, I do have to say that With regards to this game, I was a bit disappointed by Croatia based on what we've seen from them, certainly since the group stage uh, and into the knockout phase. We'd seen a bit more from them in terms of character, in terms of organisation. So to see them capitulate towards the end of the first half was quite disappointing. But at the same time, that shouldn't take away from what was a very uh, disciplined and, uh, you know, very purposeful uh, performance from Argentina. You know, I think they set out, they knew exactly what they wanted to do. I think the thing that was the most impressive about Argentina is the way that they managed to keep keep their emotions in check for the majority of the 90 minutes. That's not something that we saw from them against the Netherlands. You know, we saw them, uh, you know, almost throw it away, uh, you know, sort of 
you know, self-combusting uh, towards the end of that game. So to see them keep those emotions in check, I think that's a really big step for them, uh, you know, towards potential World Cup success, because whoever they come up against in the final, be it France, be it Morocco, it's going to be a big test, both in terms of the skill that they're going to come up against, uh, but also in terms of the, the you know, the character and the, the mental toughness that they're going to need in order to, to see this through. JJ, you mentioned Croatia. I mean, you know, we talk about World Cup cycles and kind of generations of players that kind of come through, golden generations of players. When you look at this Croatia team and kind of where they where they go from here, what does that look like for them as we start to look towards 2026 for a team like that? I think given his age, you know, knowing that he's 37 years old, it's difficult to see Luka Modric at another international tournament, let alone a World Cup. You know, the Euros will be in two years' time. Uh, that means Modric will be 39, you know, pushing 40. It's difficult to see somebody who, you know, has already started to show, uh, you know, that they're getting a little leggy. And, you know, I would love to, 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 to look as leggy as Modric does, you know, because obviously, you know, five-time Champions League winner with Real Madrid, uh, we get to still enjoy him on, uh, on, on, on Paramount Plus as well. It's, he is a phenomenal player. He's been an absolutely amazing talent uh, over the years, but I don't think that Croatia's international future uh, includes him, unfortunately. I think that this tournament has showed that there is a new generation of talent coming through. Livakovic, I know he didn't do himself justice in this game, but has come out, uh, you know, with major credit from this tournament same goes for Gradiel uh, and Juranovic as well in the defense so I do think that there are reasons to to be optimistic and perhaps Croatia will now uh, decide to go in a different direction in terms of the management uh, and potentially look towards some of the the newer talents emerging because it is still a country that's producing a lot of talent you know perhaps not at the same level as a uh, Modric individually uh, but certainly in terms of a competitive team uh, you know I don't think that, that Croatia should have too many uh, worries moving forward. Second semi-final of course coming up tomorrow it has France taking on Morocco. Morocco who are the surprise package here in terms of getting this deep into the tournament not many would have predicted them to go this far. When you look at that matchup and how those two teams match up, what kind of a game are you expecting there? Uh, knowing the history between the two countries and how many of these players, you know, sort of know each other, apply their trade in the same league, uh, I think that there is bound to be a lot of needle in this one. I think it's going to be, you know, uh, quite chippy in places. I can see a couple of cards, uh, certainly. Personally, given the absentees that we're expecting on Morocco's side, I think that this is a slightly easier task for France than it would have been had Morocco been at full strength. But that's not to say it's going to be a walk in the park. I think that France will have to be absolutely switched on from the very first minute to the very last uh, if they're to come out of this with a, with a victory in 90 minutes. Could quite easily see this one go to extra time as well because Morocco will fight tooth and nail. You know, they've come so far, first African and first Arabic nation, uh, you know, to reach this stage of a World Cup. History has already been written. There's nothing to lose now for Morocco, everything to win. Uh, you know, and we've seen already that they are the undoubted Cinderella story of this World Cup, you know, the, a real true underdog in every sense of the word, uh, you know, and I think that they will really give France a, a thorough examination. That said, France have shown, uh, you know, their own toughness themselves. They've overcome adversity since losing a number of players coming into the tournament, uh, you know, and that same, uh, you know, winning mentality, that same strong chemistry, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, Didier Deschamps did so well to foster back in 2018 is evident once again. So for me, it's difficult to look past France, despite how spirited this Moroccan side are and despite how fantastic the, the story around their progress through this World Cup has been. JJ, you're French. I wouldn't expect you to pick against France in this particular matchup. Well, people said to me, you're English uh, going into the England-France game, and uh, I still <laughs> back France for that one. Uh, honestly, my, my overall bet since the beginning of the, 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 the tournament, or my pick uh, since the beginning was Argentina, I'm going to stick with that. Obviously, that would mean heartbreak for, uh, for my adopted nation, but they've got to get to that final first. Yeah, they are the favorites of France uh, to advance past Morocco tomorrow. Uh, minus 175, a Morocco plus 575. It's been a great story. Uh, a lot of people would love to see it, cheering for the underdog Morocco to get to the final but it looks like it will be France at least they are the favorites and certainly would be a great final between Argentina and France Jonathan Johnson joining us to discuss the first semifinal as Argentina advanced past Croatia by a score of 3-0 Lionel Messi one step closer to his World Cup title and for more on this game and the setup for the second semifinal be sure you're tuning into House of Champions you can download and follow wherever you get your podcast or 
You can scan the QR code and listen now. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.